Hey everyone, Caleb with Antique Book Collective, and today I'm getting to you guys with how to remove foxing from your books. So, uh, foxing guys, uh, you guys probably have seen it, you might not know what it's called, but there are a lot of different kinds of foxing. Some foxing is going, and it's just uh, little spots on your pages, we'll go over that in a little bit, but foxing guys, sometimes it's going to be black, sometimes it's going to be like brown, yellow, various colors, and what foxing is, is it's either impurities in the pages themselves, or it's mold, uh, colonies, mold, spores mildew sort of stuff getting on your books. So with that said though guys, uh, I have two Clive Cussler books for you. So as you can see here, this one is a Clive, eh, Clive Cussler book. It actually isn't Ty. This is a fake cover, believe it or not guys. I'm doing it just for the props for this thing, but um, two books guys. Um, this one here on the bottom, uh, it did have some uh, foxing which I uh, dealt with as best I could based on what I could find on the interweb, based on prior knowledge, all that sort of stuff. I basically ran a test for you guys. And then this one, uh, this very official C Clive Cussler book, uh, I did not treat for the mildew. So with that said, uh, the foxing, as you guys can see here, it's got all the tiny little black spots that you normally see that uh, are caused by foxing. Um, this, again, it's just one of the kinds of foxing that you'll see. It's just the black little mold spots. Um, that is not too terrible for what some books I've seen. Some books I've seen are like just completely covered in mold. Other books, you have just spots of mold, spots of mildew, that sort of stuff. So uh, the little black dots, it's not the end of the world. People do still buy those books. I don't personally like selling them like that, so this book I'm actually throwing away, uh, hence why I made it a very official cover. But uh, this book here, I was looking at, and I was like, okay, so I'm going to be throwing this one away probably as well, but let's see if I can clean up the foxing as best I can. Let's see if I can get it to the point that I would actually think about selling it. And Admittedly, looking at it now, a day later, uh, when I, I did this last night, I did a couple different tests. In fact, I've done quite a few different tests over the past couple of months, uh, off and on trying to figure out how to clean this book up. And uh, honestly, the last test that I did, which is what I was honestly thinking would work the best, it definitely did work the best, but at this point, I would say this book is too far gone. With the water damage that I uh, caused to it due to the other testing that I did uh, with it. Uh, would I sell this book after having all the mold on it? Probably not. So this book, guys, it's just a Clive Cussler book. It's nothing fancy. Uh, I did buy from the same place that I bought this. I did buy one that was signed. So if I had a signed one that had mold on it, yeah, I might clean that up. I might get it set and pretty. Uh, set and pretty. I might make it look really good. And then I might mention in the listing, hey, this thing had mold. Uh, and after cleaning it up and after making sure the mold was actually dead, uh, I might do that. But um, for a book like this that I paid a dollar for and that I might get two dollars for five dollars for something like that it's not really worth it for me and again this book's not gorgeous honestly uh due to what i did it's not quite what i want it to be uh to sell it any who's so i will hang on to the dust jacket because that will be worth something in the future for me uh because i'm going to continue selling these books because these books have done pretty well for me but uh with that said though guys uh, i just want to go over some of the different things that i did to test this book uh well test it on this book to see if i could make it look fine and dandy make it so the black spots of foxing became this as you guys can see here there's almost no foxing left on this in fact the only thing i can really see in in person i'm sure it doesn't come up over the uh camera but something like the only thing i can really see is the fact that this right here is just a little bit browner than this corner here so hopefully if i do the corner exactly like this you guys might be able to see color difference the color dif difference is not huge in fact seeing this color difference i would only think that this book was on like a top shelf and collected some dust which did not come off these very easily you know like it's totally normal to see stuff like that it's just a little bit layer of what could just very well be dirt of course it is mold i do know that uh, because of what i did to fix it all that sort of stuff but end of the day, I think that's pretty stinking uh, clean. It looks pretty good. Uh, so what I did at the end of the day, and guys, uh, there's a lot of advice on the internet on this. One of the pieces of, of advice is don't do this at home. Uh, I'm what you call an expert or an idiot, whichever you want to call it me. I don't know. But um, guys, there are different cleaning agents. Some of them are not safe. Some people say only go to the experts. So disclaimer, don't do this if you're not an expert unless if you're an idiot, I don't know. Um, but guys, uh, this is what I personally did. Uh, when I was trying to clean this book, I first used uh, pumice stone. Um, some people swear by them. I personally do not like them whatsoever for trying to clean up your books, but there are some people that say, yeah, you could just scrape off all the issues and you're fine. I find that's like the worst possible way to do it. But um, because I heard enough people advise it, I was like, 
well, I think this is a stupid idea, but I'll test it out on a trash book. And I tested it out on a trash book and hated it. And ever since then, I've done it very, 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 very seldomly. Basically only on trash books that I want to test a new method of maybe cleaning it. So uh, with that said, the foxing, um, it was pretty bad down here. Believe it or not, I know there's like no remnants of it left down here. But uh, there were a lot of the black spots exactly like this uh, down here which I did treat with, uh, not treat, that I did try scraping with the pumice stone. It did some, but I mean, what you end up doing when you're doing that, you're grinding the paper itself. So if you really wanted to do it, you'd have to grind down like a, say, a few millimeters, maybe. Maybe not millimeters, but a good chunk you'd end up um, grinding down and it would probably be noticeable and you probably wouldn't get it totally smooth. So people would see it and be like, Huh, that's weird that it's pitted because people are used to smooth ones. Uh, so pumice, probably not the best way to get rid of foxing. Another thing that I have did that I have done previously to different mold things is rubbing alcohol. Some people say water down your rubbing, rubbing alcohol. Other people say just use it straight. So I tried water down, I tried straight, and I used it on it. And uh, when you're doing that, a lot of people say you're supposed to only dab it and like try to pick it up and dab, dab, dab. Like not actually pick it up, but like as you're dabbing, hope that your Q-tip or whatever you use picks up the uh, impurities that did not work for me it did sort of reduce how dark the foxing was because again my foxing was pretty black like this so it did help a little bit but it was not nearly enough so the next and final thing that i did that i see a lot of people recommend and that i have now officially done and tested was bleach so guys bleach has its own slew of issues don't mix bleach and rubbing alcohol that is not really a safe thing to do um obviously i waited long enough for the rubbing alcohol to be gone gone before i tried the bleach on it but um when i did the bleach guys uh, a lot of people recommend when you're dealing with mold to do like a one part bleach 10 parts water solution for me i knew that that was not going to be enough for what i was dealing with because i have treated uh, more porous surfaces uh for mold before um one part water sorry one part bleach 10 part water does work pretty well if you're cleaning something smooth like my whiteboard behind me it might work pretty well at that and uh it won't kill the mold guaranteed but it will probably do a pretty good job but for this here i did two different solutions for the bleach just to really test things out one of them was one part bleach one part water so half and half which it helped about this much guys it basically did nothing it spread things around a little bit made a bigger mess honestly for me and then i tried just straight bleach and guys the moment i did the straight bleach i instantly knew oh that is what i should have done the very beginning the only reason why i didn't do it in the beginning was i did want to test things out really well so but again guys when i did the bleach like right away i was like oh that is totally going to be what's totally going to fix this and i've done just straight bleach on mold before and it just is like magic um of course there you have the fumes to issue, uh, worry about you have the damage that it does do to the paper i would not do that to an antique book personally uh that's why i did it with a newer book a trash book basically that i just wanted to run some tests on uh, in addition to that guys uh, when i was doing the bleach i did accidentally get some bleach on the dark blue here which you guys could see there so honestly i could go over that with like a blue sharpie a dark blue shop sharpie maybe and no one would notice but again i'm gonna throw this book away so it's not worth my time but uh guys as soon as i did the bleach i instantly saw the bleach like oxidizing away all the mold uh the smell uh, of the mold itself sort of had gone away uh the smell wasn't too terrible in the very beginning uh however now that i did bleach on it like honestly i don't i don't smell anything like at all like it doesn't even really smell like bleach which is a very nice thing to do uh nice thing to think about because honestly when i was doing it i was wondering is this book gonna smell like a public pool for the rest of existence uh, again i'm throwing it away so it doesn't really matter but like i was thinking hmm could that be something that people don't like like i've been in a public pool before with like a book and i've had my book be splashed not like in the pool but like by the pool and i was like that book did still smell a little bit like chlorine later but maybe it's gonna be different this time and sure enough it definitely does smell not like a pool like there's maybe a hint of chlorine uh bleachness to it but not much which is pretty uh pretty cool uh since a lot of books paper is already bleached the added bleach probably isn't too terrible for the smell honestly but uh with that said though guys i did do the bleach itself uh initially i tried just treating it uh topically to the certain 
different black spots, but because of all the other things that I had done, the color of the mold and the uh, foxing, whatever you want to call it, had spread a little bit. So I ended up having to treat almost the entire surface of uh, the top of the text block. The only parts that I didn't get, um, you could see the line of where I stopped. Um, I don't know exactly how I would go about doing this differently in the future. Potentially I would just do bleach. Honestly, I could have done just bleach on this one and seen what happened. Um, I didn't do that for this video because I just wanted to get to you guys really quick with this information. So again, guys, foxing in books, um, it is usually going to be either because of impurities in the pages themselves, either pieces of uh, like bits of metal from the way they manufactured the paper or from the printing process or anything like that, or it's going to be mold, mildew, that sort of thing from moisture that it's been exposed to over the years. Um, bleach, guys, it's maybe not the safest thing to handle. Put on gloves, all your safety, PE, PPE, all that stuff. Like That's the recommendation for me. Uh, did I do that? I won't answer that question. But um, when I was doing this, guys, I basically did my bleach. And again, I did pure bleach for this to make it so it worked really well. Um, the half and half just did not work for me. Obviously, 10 parts water, one part bleach would not have worked at all for me. Rubbing alcohol didn't work, grinding it didn't work, so bleach was the only thing I personally found that worked pretty well, and I put my bleach in a small glass, like, and I filled it like, yeah, about that much, so basically no bleach in it, and I used a Q-tip, and that's how I topically applied it. Um, I would not recommend pouring bleach directly onto the book, because then you'll get all sorts of water damage. Uh, the reason why this book here, uh, you guys will actually potentially see, there is some waviness to these pages, and that waviness, guys, that's not really from my... Um, not really from the bleach part, that's from all the other experiments that I did that a lot of that water damage came from. The bleach, um, since I was only applying it with a Q-tip, it wasn't out getting nearly enough moisture on the book uh, to cause that sort of water damage. However, if you guys are going to do this, you will want to take your Q-tip after you dip it into the bleach with your gloves on, with your glasses, with your respirator, all the sort of PPE that you might want. Uh, once you dip it in though, be sure to like press it against the side of the glass to get off the excess uh, bleach moisture because you don't want to have all of that bleach get absorbed into the book because that will make the pages be a little wavy and people might see that and be like, oh, the book's no longer very good condition. It's just good condition because it has water damage, you know. That is something that, something that you will want to do if you do do this, but again, don't do this if you're not an expert. Wink, wink. Wait, what? I didn't say that. Safety second. What? I didn't say that either. Safety first, guys. But uh, with all that said, though, guys, I hope this video was helpful. Uh, I find foxing happens on quite a few books. Personally, I pass over books if I see a book with foxing on it. Um, if it was my favorite book ever and if it was like signed by my mom and my mom was dead, I might do everything I could to save the book. But for most books like these, I'm just going to throw them away. They're not worth anything. They're nothing special. Uh, no one's going to pay a lot of money for them. So these don't have any value. However, there are books I know that people will have that do have value for them. Uh, again, guys, you want to hire an expert if you want your book restored professionally and have it be perfect. However, I know that that's not in everyone's budget, so that's why people make these do not try at home videos and tell you exactly how to do it because you're not going to try it at home after I told you how to do it and told you not to try it, are you? So uh, with all that said, uh, said and done though, guys, uh, I, I do go over a lot of different tutorials on how to clean books, save books, store your books, because honestly, one of the best ways to, prevent, uh, to take care of foxing is to prevent it. Remember the entire thing, an ounce of pre prevention is worth a pound of the cure. It's all about prevention. Uh, and if you want another idiom, a stitch in time saves nine. There's another one for you guys. But uh, with that said, uh, it's all about storing your books well so they don't get the foxing in the first place. These two books did not fox on my watch. Uh, I bought them foxed already. Um, honestly, if I noticed it when I was buying it, I wouldn't have bought these books, but I was buying these books for cheap enough that I wasn't too terribly worried about it. But with all that said and done though, guys, uh, I would like for you guys to watch my book, uh, my video, sorry, on how to store books properly. Uh, it's for antique books, I believe, but it applies to all books, honestly, because eventually your book that you have right now will be an antique. You probably won't be around for when it becomes an antique, but there's a chance that it will be. So uh, with that said and done though, guys, again, that's that video there. Please be sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.